<laughs> just like baby humans. Once you pop them out, you just let them go. Just let them go. They're free range chickens from then on. <laughs> oh, yep. She, she's ready to fight. You have fun with that. It's a, uh, it's a pivot. <laughs> All right, guys. Welcome back to Ag with Emma. Today we are in Wyoming um, with Brent. And I recorded a podcast with Brent. So if you guys are true fans, you've listened to the podcast and you'll know that Brent just sends it. So today... We're just gonna send it and it's gonna be fun. I think we're gonna go, what are we doing today? Right now we're going to put out minerals so you can look at all the baby calves. Yeah, buddy, baby cows. Also, if you wanna know more about Brent, we're not gonna waste the time in this video, but he's basically a, he's a Wyoming cowboy from Pennsylvania. And I will link the description to his pod, the, I'll put the, I'll put the description. Put the podcast link in the uh, <laughs> description that so check it out if you want to learn more about Brent so since we are putting out mineral right now we will tell you the differences and why he's putting it out so basically the mineral we're putting out right now is just formulated to help them get back in industry terms get back in calf or get ready to conceive so that this summer when we put bulls out there they're ready to do the deed and get bred right now they're um, you know, while they're lactating and trying to, you know, get their insides back into normal. See, after they pushed a 100 pound calf out, they're just, it's a lot of demand on the body to raise a calf and all that. So here is the good old mineral. This is just salt. Salt? That's just salt? Just salt. Is it not the mineral? Salt's a mineral. Well, it's not the mineral mix. It's just salt. It's just salt? I think you should lick it. <laughs> so if you can't hear because of the cows, I'm sorry. We're ranching. So that is mineral. And they're gonna put it in these little tubs right here. And then this other stuff. Salt. And apparently there's a difference. <laughs> but nothing on. Look, it says calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, potassium, all that shit. So it's not just salt. I just classify salt as a mineral. Salt is a mineral. <laughs> but there's a mineral mix and then just salt. It's slang term. So they have a lot of babies running around right now and it's calving season. So we are gonna have Brent kind of explain what he does during calving season. Some of, not the risks, but like there's good and bad to everything and part of agriculture is the good and bad. So here you go, talk away. <laughs> so lesson number one of any livestock, not just cattle or whatever. Uh, old farm manager when I, where I went to college told me this and it rings true. If you got livestock, you're gonna have dead stock. Um, and when you're, you know, you have a bunch of cows, you're gonna, you're gonna lose some calves, lose some cows. So that's pretty sad, but really it all makes up for it when, you know, you come out here and you see all these little calves running around playing and jumping and bucking and knowing that you kind of helped usher them into this world and makes it all worth it. You gotta take the highs with the lows. That's a, that's a life lesson right there. So during calving season, how many times do you come out here to, to check on things and how do you, because they're having babies all the time, right? Yeah, they don't, they don't sign up on a on a sign up sheet for what time they're gonna have their baby so i mean when it's hot and heavy i'm out here from sun up to sundown and beyond just driving around making sure no one's having problems because you'll have you know you'll have calves that are backwards or stuff like that where you got to help them out um so i'm just driving around making sure everyone's doing good all day and then so when we calve, as soon as the calves are ready, they're up and ready to go, we will push them out into a different pasture. It just kind of helps keep the chaos down 
in our calving pasture. So like this is a pear pasture. Um, and, and a then, pear is a mom and a calf. Yeah. yeah. So between <laughs> tagging and pairing out, pushing pears, it pretty much will take your whole day up. And sometimes your nights, cause when, like how long ago was it you were up all night? Yeah, so with our heifers down at the main ranch, um, since heifers have never done it before and they're not quite fully grown yet, um, we'll do round the clock checks on them. So like I'll work every three out of every four days, I'll be down there 11 at night to three in the morning, just making sure that we're not having any problems with heifers and whatnot. It's not bumpy out here at all. <laughs> I actually have my tripod this time, guys. So it should be a little smoother. If it was just my arm, here we'll hold it with just my arm. Yeah. Floor it. Just kidding. <laughs> don't do that. We don't. <laughs> Bust your head. It's yeah. He licks salt, floors it. He's just, crazy. He's the definition of crazy cowboy from Wyoming. All those yeehaw. I ain't no cowboy. <laughs> Call me fingers, cause I ain't no hand. <laughs> Just kidding out here. They're pickup farmers. I mean pickup. Yeah, we don't ride horses. They don't ride horses, so it's okay. Yeah, depending to... on who you ask, if you ask the super punchers, I'm I'm not even a rancher. <laughs> I'm I'm barely a farmer. He's a cow harvester. We're cow people, not cowboys. Cow people, not cowboys. Cattlemen, not cowboys. Bodies, not hands. This is nothing to dig at people who cowboy differently than the pickup cowboys. Everyone does things different. That's why I come do what I do. It's like, they they cowboy from their pickup and four-wheelers. It's pretty flat out here. We're not quite in the mountains. Yeah. So we don't really need horse. There's some spots where it'd be nice to have a horse, but, you know, you got to feed a horse 365 days a year. You got to feed a pickup, like, when it's empty. With my four-wheeler, I only <laughs> got to put fuel in it when I use it. Exactly. And my four-wheeler ain't going to buck me off and run away. It might buck me off. But it ain't gonna run but away. But that's gonna be an operator error and that's solely. Gonna be my <laughs> and have y'all seen the price of hay lately? Gosh dang. Have you seen the price of gas? Price of gas? Gosh dang. It's just getting expensive to be any kind of cowboy. <laughs> and because we're always catching views on this YouTube channel. Look at that. Good old Wyoming. It's more flat out here. Yeah, we're we're right on the so we're right east of the Laramie Range, which is the very eastern part of the <clears throat> um, Rocky Mountains. This is only, so where we're at right now is only 20 miles from the Nebraska state line. And then another part of Wyoming is their weather is wacko right now. And it's wacko everywhere, but like Brent was telling me about- It was 90 degrees on Saturday. Yeah. It snowed Saturday night. So 90 degrees to what's the temperature of freezing water? 32 degrees. That's not good for cattle. What happens when the temperature swings like that? What are the effects? Yeah, I mean, you, just like just like people, I mean, when the temperature swings like that, you get a little congested and don't really feel too hot. Well, you know, imagine being two days old and dealing with that. Yeah, you get a lot of pneumonia, stuff like that. It's not quite as bad in the spring, um, but in the fall, it can really, some crazy temperature swings are really, Give you some sick calves and reduce weight gain and stuff like that. And weight gain is important because that's the reason you select it's the genetics. You it's how you make money. So you select genetics that are like, bam, weight gain, give me at it. And then when the cold and the hot's like, rah, 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 and then it's like, just kidding. <laughs> you don't get your weight gain. <laughs> what is this, bop it? Bop it, twist it. So we are driving around on pasture right now. They also feed hay. We're about to go check some calves on a circle. It's a pivot. It's a circle with a sprinkler on it's it. A, uh, it's a pivot. <laughs> and since I always tell you guys how I met the people that I interview with, I met Brent out of TikTok comments because I post ag fat quizzes on TikTok and I'm obsessed with how many square feet are in an acre. And Brent started commenting consistently like, okay, yeah, that's a cool number, but can you tell me how many acres are in a section? and it's 640 for those of you that didn't know. But I put it in a quiz one time and he's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you finally did it. So I followed him back because he posts cow stuff and cow stuff is cool. And then we made a podcast and now we're making YouTubes about cows and sections and pivots. <laughs> Not circles. 
It's a pivot. Thank you. It's a pivot. It's a pivot because it pivots around a point and it doesn't have to be a full circle. Like you can have a three quarter or a half circle. What are you gonna say? Oh, I'm gonna go out and check my crops on my half circle. People do say that. It's a pivot because of the way it is. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Part of pickup farming, you can just stick your phone. Pickup cowboy in plus the YouTube. You just stick your phone out the window, see? That's where they get the water. Water? Or is it High water? Quality High quality H2O. High quality H2O. So they're not out here going thirsty. They got a water. Isn't it all like, do you just throw out the water tanks or do you guys actually like put some sense into where you put your water tanks? Put some sense into it, I mean. You ideally, don't just go roll it off the pickup ideally, and let it fall where it lands? <laughs> ideally this water tank wouldn't be where it is though. So ideally it would be over there by them trees. Why so they could have cover trees? and water. Cover and water. Do you actually say water or water? Water. I'm from Pennsylvania. He's from Pennsylvania. So you got your pivots. You got your minerals, mineral tubs, your water tanks, your cows, natural fertilizer, the cheap stuff. <laughs> and there's a lot more that makes a cattle operation go smoothly. He's still spitting salt out. <laughs> So why do you check calves? Why do we do it? Once they come out, they're fine, right? Yeah. <laughs> just like baby humans. Once you pop them out, you just let them go. Just let them go. They're free range chickens from then on. <laughs> now, basically, we just come out, come out once a day, twice a day. Um, just to make sure nothing's sick, getting scours, which is just fancy word for diarrhea. Because um, cows, I mean, they're basically born with no immune system. Uh, that's why it's important for when a calf's born for it to get up and drink right away <clears throat> one to get away from predators because you know coyotes and you know further west you got wolves and stuff but um you know they're born with no immune system and that first you know drink of milk they're going to get contains a lot of antibodies it's called colostrum so and basically within a 24-hour window the part of their digestive system that absorbs those antibodies closes pretty quick so you got a calf that you know it, within a couple hours isn't up drinking you probably got to pull it in the barn and give it some colostrum or it's just going to have a pretty poor immune system its whole life and then when you're checking calves you can well when calves are born they get a tag that matches their mama so most of the time they'll have the same number and it's a different color right well it doesn't matter what so basically every operation tags different so like my best friend back home they tag based on color pink for a girl blue for a boy um and they tag the year and then if it's the first calf it'd be 2201 2202 and so on out here we get them a pretty much identical tag and i'll show you that later but get a pretty much identical tag to their mom depend then left ear for heifers right ear for bulls every operation's different that's just it's I've talked about it in videos before. I haven't talked about it specifically, but I've had other guests and tours and interviews that have discussed the importance of tagging and records within an operation. So tagging calves is not to be mean, it's to keep track of things. And like not just the number, but like vaccinations and... Anything you do, you should keep track of it. Yeah. Basically what I'm trying to count right now though, is I've probably worked on half a dozen different operations and I can guarantee you every one of them has a different tagging style, has a different vaccination and medical protocol, has a different record keeping protocol. Basically, you just gotta do what works for you, what you can keep track of. Don't let anyone else tell you different. Exactly, so if it works for you, it doesn't have to make sense for anybody else and that's a life statement as well as a <laughs> calving tagging statement. Y'all keep that up there. <laughs> so we've got a little cow and her baby, her baby calf right there, number 19. And she is looking like she's ready to tussle. Oh, yep, yeah, she, she's ready to fight. You have fun with that. I need to tag. <laughs> what color would you like? I don't know what color shirt. Her color is yellow. So you're gonna get this. You're gonna get your little piercing again. Bada bing, bada boom. Is there the backs in here too? Okay. And those are the backs. You're going to write the number down, same as mom's. 
You don't mess up the tag, though, because, uh, that can happen. <laughs> so, now you got that. Oh, look at how cute. Oh, he's gonna go for it. Oh, man, I'm not looking for it. Oh, you got one. Never Important one. part. I always bring two because if the first one breaks, you don't want to have to catch that calf again. We're just gonna sit in the truck and watch from afar so I don't mess anything up. She's like drooling, like rabies kind of vibes. <laughs> Usually you drop the face aren't too bad. It's the bald Puncher. Brand new tag. Tag them and bag them. <laughs> and then you write it down. What are you writing down? Just write down or tag the gender or sex of the calf. So yellow 19. Um, here's a heifer calf. It's color. So basically, your right color is <clears throat> gray for all the funky colors. And then I'll come over here and write blonde brockle because she was a blonde calf and she kind of had a brockle face. And that just helps me when I'm pairing them out. If I don't, you know, if I have this not checked off, I can look and see what color the calf is so I can find it. And it's as easy as that. It doesn't always go that smooth. Sometimes it goes smoother. Sometimes it goes smoother. I'll take my pacifier. <laughs> so when you have this many mamas, having this many babies sometimes their little hormones get all not their horn is it their it's their hormones getting all like oh that's a baby you know how moms are like you see moms in public like can i hold your baby it's the same with cows so they'll just go after it calf robin not cradle robin but basically they when they're about to calve their hormones or whatever you want to call it build up and too technical for me to know but basically they think they need to be a mother but they haven't pushed their own calf out yet so they'll find another calf usually if you have a cow that's trying to rob another cow's calf within 24 hours that cow is gonna calf if you can follow that oh that thing's already tagged it is the cycle of life and hormones So that is all we have. A good old gist of cows. 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 Eat beef. Eat beef. Beef, it's what's for dinner. We are farmers. Bum ba dum bum 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 bum. Anyways, catch me at Ag with Emma at all your other platforms. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Catch me at Poncho dot cattleman. I don't know what the hell it is. Poncho Cataman on TikTok. I'll tag his TikTok in the description of this video. Again, thanks for watching. Brent, thanks for your time. Any closing words? Eat beef. Hasta la pasta, folks.